Time Lords of Terror by Hephaestus, Chapter 5. The citizens of Ponyville looked on in horror as the awful thing pulsated towards them. They had felt it first. A cold, sick dread in the pits of their stomachs when they heard it. A sound, a horrible, screaming sound inside their minds, like a foal burning alive. It drew closer and closer, beckoning them outside. There had been a large congregation of ponies outside before he came, as another one of those bizarre storms had formed. This time over the every forest, and moved towards them, closer and closer, as he felt their minds begin to fray. His malevolence broadcasted directly into their brains. Could have been a limb stretched out over town, casting a shadow over Ponyville. Only, the shadow too seemed to be alive and physical. As it crawled over them, they felt a feeling, not like being covered in squirming, screaming insects. A thousand million bodies and a hundred billion legs wriggled and scratched over their skin. Each citizen began to feel their minds shatter, a tearing, fraying feeling at the very core of their beings, a dam holding back the tumultuous flood of insanity. They left. The citizens let out a collective sigh of relief. The cloud was still there, a poisonous, rolling miasma of a bruised purple hue. But whatever had been within it, whatever had been casting its dread shadow over their souls was moving away. A chorus of cries, wails, and sobs rang out amongst the scattered town ponies, each of them knowing deep down that a horrible force had set down on Equestria. Mothers wept as they clutched their foals to them, stallions panicked and battled nonsensically. The town began an exceptional descent into madness. The hysterical screams of doom mingling together into a demented chorus of fear. The cloud began to retract. They all stopped mid right to look up at the cloud. Pulsing purple smog throbbed rapidly, moving towards a single spot as though a huge fan had been turned on and was sucking it in. The screaming was still present in their minds, but now to get on a new tone, a new color. I was afraid. The screaming was still... The beast within screamed and pleaded. Where hatred and malevolence once was, there was now a plot of fear and panic. As it cried out for mercy, so did the citizens of Ponyville cry out in joy. You and their souls, they were saved. The day had won. A flash. The town's ponies blinked in confusion. Another flash. A great dome of incandescent light radiated out for the Everfree Forest, growing bigger and bigger like a bubble of rainbow hues. It burst, and all of the question was blanketed in a warm, shimmering light. Doctor Hooves. Time Lords of Terra. Final plot. Twilight's eyes flared open. The early afternoon sun stung their eyes as it shone from a cloudless deep blue sky. So he groaned as he blinked through the stinging light. What happened? Where was she? Looks to be afternoon. Must have slept in. Just had the weirdest dream in the history of unconscious thought. She not groggily to herself. A box that was bigger on the inside than the outside. So stallion, it wasn't really a stallion. Alien witches in a, in a... Toy felt a nervous twins in her stomach. That thing's awful laughter still ringing in her ears. It was a dream, right? She so rushed to her host and looked around. She so was in a forest, less green, familiar. The Everfree Forest. Everything seemed to be alive, too alive. The leaves on the tree were so green and healthy that they almost glowed. Bird's song was so loud and jubilant it looked like it was cheering. The air was pregnant with the smell of life, the rich smell of a healthy forest in the middle of summer, the smell of flowers and earth, of plants and water. So looked down on the earth. It was rich and brown. The smell emanating from it was almost appetizing its fertility. The forest was alive. Everything was alive. There were five other ponies around her, lying unconscious and on the ground. Her friends. They all rested really peacefully on this, this look grass was occurring. They seemed to be sleeping. The flights rising in a slow and steady motion. The beautiful elements of harmony glaring in the bright afternoon sun. She opened her mouth to call their names when a familiar smoke spoke. Don't mind them. They're not sleeping it off. Half a planet's worth of PKE towering through your body, like forcing an ocean through a straw in one go. So he spun around to see a handsome brown stallion sitting with his back turned to her, casting a look over his shoulder to her, a large brilliant smile on his face. Duh! She began to say, before racing over to the stallion as fast as she could run. Doctor! Oh, thanks, Celestia. I thought you were... Shh! He said curtly. What now? I'll take the phone. Oh, sorry. 
She said sleepily before realizing what she had just said. Wait, what? He seemed for her to come closer. She strolled and crying over to him, looking over his shoulders what was holding his four legs. It was a foal. A filly, to be precise. Her coat was a beautiful sheen of azure, and the whole sun had direct sunlight. And her mane was a very subdued, creamy orange, and was supposed to a tiny horn. She was a unicorn, whoever she was. Doctor, Twilight whispered. Why are you holding a foal in the middle of the Everfree Forest? Hmm? Oh, he said, looking down at the filly, back up at Twilight. Dragon rule how Twilight sparkle. Twilight sparkle, dragon who rock. Now we're all friends. So I contemplated this for a second before jumping into the railway and The Carrion Knight! Shh! Sorry. Doctor, that's the Carrion Knight? As he said, gesturing at the infant. He smiled and nodded. Yep! But since the body's smooth, broke the quantum lock. When he was revived, he was referred to a formal wear pony. Twilight remembered this conversation. Right, formal wear pony. Okay, why is he a fool then? That's all she ever was. I put a hundred years old, give or take. Then a suckling by Carrion Knight Sanders. Well, she changed the equivalency template, she became the pony equivalent of what she was. Just a thought. She's beautiful. Oh, I said, still trying to connect to his thing, lightning throwing beast she had fought earlier, with the perfect little filly nestled in the doctor's foreleg. She's still going to be a carrion knight? Does she just look like a pony? I'm afraid not. The doctor shook his head. The novel sun to her body and soul resulted in total conversion. Like me, she's all pony. Will she remember what happened here? Doctor frowned, and almost pain expressed on his face. Even this little body's brain could physically support her previous consciousness. Possessed by the smooths would have destroyed her mind. She's a blind state, ready to live and learn again. She will, however, be very talented maggots, eh? Like you, really. Try so smiled, happy beginning for a new life. And her mother? Gone, literally, the doctor said flatly. That thing pulled her living soul apart until it was just PKE. Like pulling a house apart brick by brick, soon it just becomes a pile of debris. It destroyed her in every sense of the word. The doctor blinked and looked up there, then a smile pulling at the sides of his mouth. By the way, just how did you defeat the smooths? If I recall correctly, I believe I died before revealing my master plan. So I rolled her eyes. Oh, ye of little faith. I remember how my element of harmony behaved when exposed to sending 42 on a side screwdriver. You said it sucked into PKE, but in reality, it... Pulled it in like a magnet, they said in unison. So went out of them, so I said preferably. And you reverse the polarity of all your elements of harmony. Switch from positive to negative, pull the smooths in like a magnet, and refold it into a requestion field based on your body's PKE template. The doctor said triumphantly, You, Twilight Sparkle, absolutely brilliant. Tell me something I don't know, Twilight said happily. I'm 900 years old. What? Well, 905 ish. A large receiving jacket brought down the doctor's head. Twilight Sparkle! Well, I do not know what you are into. I do think he is too old for you. They turned to see and spread around to see a smile of Sakura and a rather dazed looking rust count brown colt. Sakura? Cherry Swirl? But how? She shrugged. Hello, am I here? I do not know. But I do not think it was my time to go. As for him, who could say? Just be glad he's alive today. Twilight looked at the doctor, who was beaming. Doctor? Any theories? He had to twilight the still sleeping draggle. He got to his house. Twilight, well, you live the life I've led. So for as long as I live, you learn not to look a gift horse in the mouth. He says, pour a four leg around the neck of Sakura. So confused, Cherry Squirrel. Everybody lives! Oh, what the hell? Twilight, my Sonic! Twilight loved he had the sonic screwdriver from his youth doctor to the doctor. Cut to the seat and chilled it over to him. Aha! What is it, Doctor? Twilight had asked. Cuddling the infant draggle. Dr. Clear stood. No idea. It's a miracle. But if I had to guess, I say when Rika was killed, she released Terry to a soul PKE into the environment. And when Sakura was killed, she released hers to a two. Then the smooth slurped it all up. Slurp! Ah! When you put it in the smooth and repurpose it back to the equestrian field, there was enough harmonic resonance between their old bodies to repurpose PKE that it formed a sort of recall effect, reviving both of them as heavily as ever, just like the forest. Try to tell you red draggle in the doctor's jacket. Tied the sleeves around her neck, forming a massive carrier. That's pretty scientific, I guess. Well, I try, he said pithily, before plenty of fixing a kiss on Sakura's cheek. Uh, and thanks for saving. Fantastic fact. Never do it again. I've got enough of my conscience. 
So come on, Blossom smiled the doctor. I did not intend to take the blast, but if it helps you get it happened fast. A series of groans and mumbles drew their attention. The other five ponies stirred sleepily on the soft grass. Mahayed! That was like mumbled before realizing. Mahayed! My stars, we won! Raymond Death shook her groggily into the rain. Man, but you could see a contract with medium and dirt. Flots about a useless in her face. It just is splitting. Ugh! I feel so funky. I need a shower! I don't know about you, Bears, but I think I'm going to go home, put myself a nice hot bath, and cry for the next day or so. Rarity still rubbing her temples. A day at the start of what everyone on me. First, I sniffed the air and smiled. The forest was alive again. I'm just happy that the forest is back. I hope Angel Bunny found a note I left him. Whenever I leave, I'll tell him. He finds out the forest for a house party. Pinkie Pie gasped loudly, raced over to Twilight. The doctor, Sakura, and Cherry Squirrel. I got a in your life! It's Sakura, Cherry Squirrel, and Twilight! I miss you most of all! I never died, Pinky. Oh yeah, still miss you though. The other ponies stepped their hose and raced over, each one clamoring excitedly. Professor, you're alive! Applejack said to Millie, wrapping her four legs around his neck and drawing him close for a hug. Does he ever scare me like again? Ready to flare side caught Sakura and Cherry Squirrel on the big hug, laughing happily. Twilight, Raymond said slowly. Why do you have a foal? She spun around to the doctor. How long were we unconscious? What did you do? Nothing! Honest! The doctor said defensively. Aww, Pinky said happily. I go make such a cute pony. Toy pointed to confusion. Pinky, how did she even know? You know what? Never mind. Pinky says. Everyone, meet Pony Draggle. Doctor says she changed to a foal due to this universe's equivalent temple slate. She won't remember a thing. Now that we come out to sing victorious little with a foal, wait, what? Rarity gasped and walked up to the sleeping unicorn. I smile on her face. Oh, she's so precious. We're going to have to find her a new home to pull, dear. First, I ran a fish and a hoof over the infant's forehead. I know a few couples of pony fell who would love to have a little filly. Doctor signal for all of them to follow her. Live it. Let's get off the pony for Sally. I feel we may have some explaining to do. The dark materialized between two houses that had nestled in between before. The low wheezing sound dying into a fading squeal. The doors hung inward, and nine ponies exited a box. Soon they were surrounded by the still unnerved town's ponies. Mia was out in full force. Report ponies and their camera crews were everywhere. Paraz and camera flashes beamed to weary heroes. Miss Burgle! Sounded report pony. Miss Burgle, do you have anything to say about the phenomenon witnessed by the citizens of Ponyville? Twilight heard a voice step forward. <laughs> On behalf of Princess Celestia, I am pleased to say the crisis has been averted. Miss Parker, it's the rumor that the phenomenon was related to the disappearance of local cult Terry Squirrel and the attack on his friend, true? I'm afraid I'm not liberated to divulge any information as to the correlation between those two events. However, I am pleased to announce that Terry Squirrel has been found. She says, stepping to the side, revealing like the young cult. Will somebody please be, uh, be kind enough to attract his parents? The frenzied media police instantly captured over his cult, bronzing with questions and summoning microphones to his face. Terry Squirrel began to recoil from the withering barrage of questions. When a brilliant, incandescent light flash bathed the crowd in light. Citizens, please, give the poor cult some space. It's been through quite an ordeal, said a descending ball of white light. As the sit-down burst open to reveal a large, beautiful white mare. Her long, elegant limbs shone exquisitely in crafted gold. Her nebulous, continually flowing mane shivered and sifted in color. It was Princess Celestia. Dust making my prerequisite cameo. She watched forward, and the entire crowd instantly bowing to her magnificence. She knows the stupefied cold and smiled. Go to your parents, Cherry Squirrel. They've been very worried about you. He nodded fervently and read through the wild crowd. Celestia turned towards the eight ponies in front of her. One of them was not bowing. Rather, he was casually regarding her. Rise. Princess Celestia! Twice says he walked forward. Did you get my message? Yes, Twice Sparkle. I'm sorry I could not have been here sooner. But there were some tears in the fabric of space and time that required the attention of Luna and myself. Y'all thought that was probably me, the doctor said casually. Sorry about cracking on the other of us. Doctor! Twice said horrified. This is Princess Celestia! So some respect! She turned to the amused princess. Sorry, your highness, he's new around here. Allow me to introduce... Doctor! How good it is to see you again. Princess Celestia said, a seduced smile on her face. Twice paused. What? The doctor smiled and stepped forward. Oh, I take it we've met. Twice so stepped back, her head forth back too. Well, uh, but you, uh... Naturally, you have not met me yet. 
You told me something like this was going to happen. She said, looking at the confounding expression on people's face. Something about wibbly wimey Timey wimey called it, he said with a wink. Well, a lot of something to look forward to. Celestia laughed. <laughs> Indeed. I was just saying that I had to take care of the media of Friday Care a lot. You see, well, I'd love to see you again. A bit of a crest, if you ask me. Of what? The, do the Twilight exclaimed. I read the other eight, said the doctor, smiling even wider. Lots of something to look forward to. Celestia turned to a stupefied Twilight. Twilight Sparkle, why do you have a fall? She looked over the doctor, eyebrow wise. Why does everybody jump to that conclusion? Princess, Twilight said, stepping forward. This foal was one of the creatures I wrote to you about. Twilight looked down at the now awake filly, looked back up with her enormous crimson eyes. I'll fill you in on the details at my next assertion, but she wound up like this. Hmm. Celestia said, regarding the squirming blue foal. Yes, I thought her from aura smelled a little purple. Twilight blinked, what? So we placed in my academy for the gifted, Celestia said finally. He says an enormous amount of magical power in her. What's her name? Drago Ruhag, the doctor said. Well, Drago Rao Haig Zau Rexus, if you want to get into bloodline names. And Drago Rao Haig Zu Rexus Len Carrion Ken Pelut. Tells me about the professional access he was sporting before. He noticed that he was staring at Popping Sorry. Celestia shook her head lightly. While I do not wish to disregard her lineage, she will need a local name. Twilight? What? Oh! Twilight said before looking down the full Starlight Glimmer! Okay, Asher Sky, but I had to, I'm sorry! The doctor nodded his approach, looking at the full. Well, so as he appreciated as you can remember. A tall deep darkness. Probably didn't even see a sky before coming here. Will they ever get out, Doctor? Twilight said, apart from her shot, just he almost felt sorry for her former enemies. The only way they'll get out is that the Eternals seem to have a threat no longer. The doctor said, stroking the newly Christian Asher Sky's mane. When they stopped fighting, stopped painting, you know. For that reason alone, I thought they would never get out. But Drago could have alerted her mother to our presence as we approached. She could have snapped our necks the second we turned around, but she didn't. She cared enough for her mother, for all her life, that she forgot her hatred of us and worked with us. I just smiled at Azure, gathering a toothless smile from her. Now I know it's possible for this not to change. He turned to Princess Celestia and murmured, By the way, how the plans were for PKR just became... Part of Equestria, things may get a little weird. I think my sister and I can't handle Doctor. Hmm, said Pinkie Pie, popping up between the three of them. We used to start the trio as powerful space witches, saving the multiverse from a profoundly evil life eating monster in Mistful Precious Inlets. There could be only one course of action! Twice I rolled her eyes. Apart. Apart! Pinkie's here, leaping into the air and gesturing at the crowd. You're all invited! A huge cheer rose from the crowd, and balloons. Materializing out of thin air, as festive music started to play. I love this place. The doctor said as Apple Second Pinkie Pie rushed into the vicinities. Five hours later, and the party, was it now involved in at least seven different festivals, was still going strong, albeit in other parts of town. The doctor made his way to the TARDIS, now surrounded by gifts of fruit, candy, flowers. He smiled at himself and reached out to open the door. There you are! A voice said from behind. I hear half a big Macintosh was drinking you the drink. He turned around to see seven ponies. Oh, he tried, but I wound up giving him and Caramel the sip. Not that he couldn't use the time alone. Well, you mean by that? Apples have begun before you Twilight broke in. You weren't going to leave without saying goodbye, were you? I hate goodbyes. He said solemnly before being hit in the face with a bundle of fabric. They said, better not be what I think it is. Rarity hugged and rolled her eyes. Oh, and here I was expecting a... Thank you, Verity. You didn't have to resize my monkey jacket into something more remotely venerable in a matter of hours for free. Thank you so much. Silly, silly me. He rolled in her outfit. It was the same design as his old jacket, but definitely more suited to an equine form. Oh, it's... Thank you. You're welcome, darling. She said with a wink. Rainbow Dad flew over to him and not so gently tapped him with a hoof. Now you're trying to ditch us? So thanks. Decided to turn to the Taurus. You're right. He turned it back to them. Leave your dash, Phyllis Eye, Pinkie Pie, Vanity, Apple Sack Sequoia, Twilight Sparkle, thank you, really. We all the kiddos today. Go potty, have fun, live. Are you going now, Doctor? Twilight asked quietly. No. Walls of a fleshy beast dimension are pretty fragile. If I go back now, I might collapse this dimension in myself. Yeah, Pinkie Pie said. You cannot do that, Debbie Grant. Apple Jack smiled proudly. So you're stuck here? 
Matilda's royal princess's pots takes holding you to be able to think about leaving, he says his present bank. How long would that take? Flares I said. Six hundred on any of years, he said, turning to them, a smile on his face again. I don't mind. Oh no, universe, whole new backyard. Lots of things different here. Lots of new stuff to see. Does you have a home? A family? No, not anymore. He said quietly. There was a thing. I was getting tired of that universe anyhow. Too many memories, too many enemies. Here I can explore again. Speaking of which, he said, opening his heart to the TARDIS. How about it? The other day, Terror, tried turning to say, What, explore with you? That's in the case of opening the door, yes. Explore, maybe that said. But we go out of space. Although we just call it space. The universe? That was that quick. Not the more. In the TARDIS, said Pinkie Pie. What? You have another ship? With you, Rarity said. Who else? See other words. See other effing things, he said, most of the door beckoning him. I'm not quite used to this body. I could use a hunt, a uh, hoof, whatever. Besides, you seem like the top. What do you say? That's why I groaned at Jane with frustration. The whole universe had her hoof tips, but she had responsibilities. Oh, Doctor, I would love to go with you. We all would, but we've got jobs here, responsibilities. Who's going to clear the sky with all the races while I'm off flying around in space? Remember that said with we'll our wings. Point filled needs my outrageous level of wind to function. I'm sorry, Doctor. Flash, I said shyly. But all the animals need me. I was that kicked the ground. Hi, stupid professor. I'd love to go adventure with you, but I got the farm and the apple stand. I can't just leave that for a week. Damn right, really irresponsible. And I got delicious treats to make. If I was gone, where the little fillies and cults get the yummy from? Thank you, Bryce Samuel. Quite a disappointment in her voice. And I'm sure all the Indian fascination designs would be fascinating, but I've still got sex and salt us to design for. Oh, I really call him back. I'll go with you to outer space. At least until they get a new place. Sakura so Samuel smiled. Why get to the doctor? What out of seven? Must be losing my tests. He says he held her to Taurus. Oh well, maybe we'll still have to send you a post call or something. Doors to the Taurus closed with a sharp bang, and the telltale sound of Taurus's engines filled the air. The wonderful wheezing, whirling sound fading away, along with the wonderful blue box. <sighs> Think you'll see him again? Rainbow Dad said. Something I said in her voice. Of course we'll see him again, Applesack said firmly. Fester won't give us on that that easily. On cue, there was a splash of electric hot air. The beautiful whirling sound began again. The TARDIS fully materialized in front of them. The door swung open. Alright. Did I admit it's also a time machine? I think I did, but you know. Smooth hopping. Twice mouth hung open. A time machine? Time in relative dimensions of space? Time as you like! He said a large smile on his face. Wait a minute, Professor. Applesack said slowly. At least you could go anywhere. Any win. What's win? Win is well with me. Remember that sister hooked her chin. Wait a minute. That means we can have for a week of fun and excitement. And be back in time for breakfast tomorrow! Piggy said excitedly. Dr. Nod. Yep. Breakfast tea now. Five minutes from now. A week's worth of fun and adventure. You'll be back in time for the end of the song those stallions are singing at the ball. But it that's that's impossible. Sakura, so I'll pause us up, please. The doctor smiled as Sakura appeared with a book in her mouth, tossing it to the ground. We were all craning their knees to see the book's tile. So I get guess a shock and made a mad dash for it. Remember that flash in and picked it off the ground. Receive a smile on her face. It's fine. No need to freak out like that. Passes of a Whoa! H A, check this out. She tossed the book to the green earth pony. Looked at the cover. Looks an awful lot like playing Magachast only. But would you like for me to drop a good word in for you? Oh, that's a very good one. Very elegant prose, especially during the Rarity said, getting a round of stairs from the surrounding place. What? The book glowed purple and flew into the air, whereupon it exploded into a cloud of fire, smoke, and ash. Oh no! It blew up! So I said quickly, plus furring furiously his cheeks. What a crazy happened in this instance! The doctor laughed and walked forward. Also, a second week out there, the call and I intercepted that little fella on his way to the sun. I just couldn't shake that feeling off the call to tell you it all something. Twice shot him a dirty look before succumbing to curiosity. But that was eight hours ago! Spike's teleportation breath is nearly instantaneous, regardless of distance! Time machine! The doctor said, pointing at the TARDIS. A machine that travels through time. Time machine! Miss Celestia's mane. 
Flight muttered. It is a time machine. Is it? The doctor muttered. I learn something new every day. Sit. How about it? The doctor realized he was on his own. The doors of the TARDIS squeaking lightly. Inside, the ponies were laughing and running around, chattering to each other. The doctor smiled and entered, closing the door behind him. He walked up to the control console, rearing up on his hind legs. Sit. Oh, where are all eight stood around the console, looking at him. He smiled. Whatever! They all laughed and shouted, Oh, Zay! The TARDIS butt, word, and was gone. <laughs> Starting. David Tennant as the doctor. Tennant strong, Twilight Sparkle. I'll tell you, live a minute, Flowside Pinkie Pie. I see your balls, Rainbow Dance, and Apple Chuck. The cold of us, Francis Celestia. Chorus needs to be in the seat here. Madeline Khan as Rika and re reapportment as Ragal. The end. For now. Maybe one day I'll do the sequel. For right now, a review. This fic? Ha. Ah. It's Doctor Who. It's Pony. What more do I got to say? The Doctor is perfectly in character. It's number 10. The girls are really well done. And you know what? You gotta ask yourself. Do you ever have those days where if you find a really good fic, you forgot just how good it was? I kind of have that feeling right about now. I forgot just how good the story really was. How well done the girls' emotions were. How this felt like an episode of The Doctor. How it was able to throw out some good horror scenes without being too violent. And how it was able to really well use the smooths in the carrier nights in such a way. I remember reading this back before I became a Doctor Who fan. But now that I read it and I am deep into Doctor Who fandom. This story became so much better. Yeah, the, you know this is the only downside of reading a good story. Or one that I can't really think of any bad flaws to. I feel like I'm jipping you guys out on a review. Well, still, I was a story. Next time, Spider Man. Just Spider Man.